This video is going to be about interior angles and they are perhaps the least known type of angle but arguably the most useful. What are interior angles? First, to see an interior angle in action we need to have parallel lines. There are two sets of parallel lines and then let's create an angle in between them by drawing a line. Interior means inside. So a set of interior angles are the two angles inside parallel lines. This angle and this angle. They are inside the C which is formed by the parallel lines. This is why interior angles are sometimes known as the C rule. We know about the X rule being about opposite angles and the Z rule being about alternate angles, but the C rule is about interior angles. The secret of interior angles are that, in a sense, unlike the other angle rules where in an alternate angle both angles are equal or in opposite angles both angles are equal, in in with interior angles they both add up to 180 degrees. Let's demonstrate that. I'm going to cut out one of the angles and we're going to see just if they form 180 degrees. Here we go. Let's paste it. And if this angle does form 180 degrees with the other angle, what would we expect? we would expect that they form a straight line. A straight line is after all 180 degrees, so let's see if that happens. There we are, and indeed they form a perfect 180 degree straight line. So we can write down the rule, which is interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Add to 180 degrees. How might this help us though? This rule can help us in many different situations. Let's take one drawn like so. Let's imagine we have a line going across and the two lines that you can see going diagonally are parallel. What we know is that this angle that I've just drawn is 140 degrees. But the question is, what is angle X drawn here? There's a few things we can do aside from interior angles first. If this angle is 140 degrees, we can see an opposite angle here which is also going to be 140 degrees. If you're not sure about opposite angles, I have done a video on that. You can check it out. But the point of this video is going to be about interior angles. Can you spot an interior angle here? Can you spot a C? I can see a C. Do you see? There it is. Let's do it in a different color just so you can see it even better. What do we know about interior angles inside those parallel lines? Well, they add up to 180, so if the angle here is 140 degrees, angle X would have to be 180, take away 140, which is 40 degrees. So X is 40 degrees, and both angles indeed add up to 180 degrees. What about another area where it's useful, because I did say that they are useful in many different areas. Let's call my bluff. Can you think of another question where they'd be useful? I can, in bearings. Let's say we have two towns. How about London and Oslo? Just try to think of two towns which are roughly at this sort of angle. Here's London, L, and here's Oslo, O. 
both the lines you can see going up are our north lines labeled with an N. If you don't know about bearings, don't worry too much about that. Concentrate mainly on the angle rules that I'm going to use, in particular the interior angle rule. All we're told in this question is that the angle here is 30 degrees. And the question they ask is write down the bearing of London from Oslo. Write down the bearing of London from Oslo. You're probably scratching your head and thinking, first of all, I even barely remember bearings, even if I have done it before. And second of all, to do bearings, I need some sort of angle. I need a protractor or something. All you've given me is this 30 degrees all the way down here. How can that possibly help? Well, if you've somewhat forgotten bearings, this is what you do. You start off at the place where they say from. It says from Oslo, so we're going to start at Oslo. We then look north, and here's our north line. We then measure clockwise until we reach the road towards the place we're looking for. We're looking for London, and there we've reached the road going to London. In other words, we need to know this angle. Here's where the interior angle comes in. If this angle is 30, can you spot a C that might help us out? Here is a C on its back. And what do we know about interior angles? They add up to 180. So if the angle given is 30, can you think what this angle would be? It would be 150 degrees. That isn't quite the bearing, but it's darn close. If the bearing is the angle in green, because we always need to go clockwise to find bearings, we simply do 360, take away 150, because they go round a full circle, which is indeed 210 degrees. So using the magic of interior angles, we've solved a bearings question.